Welcome everybody to this uh, qualifying round walkthrough of the Centenary Harbor Nine Hole Cup for the Masters Division. Uh, this this tutorial is walking through free to play shots for all nine holes uh, that will score you a minus 17 if you can execute these. We'll talk about some subtle tweaks that uh, I'd make if I'm playing again that could actually help you get even more than a minus 17. Before we jump into the content though, if you would like the channel, uh, subscribe and uh, click on notifications so that you can get uh, alerted as soon as I post new content. And as always, if you think this would help somebody else, I encourage you to share it. Always trying to build uh, our free, free to play community even bigger than we are today. So definitely share it with friends who need help in the master's division or other friends who are wanting to primarily focus on free to play balls. So with that, let's jump into hole number one. So the beauty of hole number one is we're going to be able to play a power slice, which means we don't have to worry about hitting perfect, which is always a benefit. So I choose to use a luminary. Um, there are other shots available with a Titan as well as a Zerk. I will show the, the Zerk shot here in this tutorial as well, and there's a separate video of the Zerk shot as well. Um, so let's take a look first here at this Luminary play. With the Luminary, you're going to push uh, all the way back up to the max after your adjustment, and then watch the, the overpower here. So right, we're not full overpower. You can see I bring it back. Uh, because if you go full overpower, there's a good chance that you're going to go over the green. Um, you can you can skip right over it and end up in the back rough, which is not terrible. You, you can you can chip in from the back rough, but uh, if we had pushed up further, you can tell that would have uh, that would have been too far. So you could even take a, another ring or so off of that overpower if you feel more comfortable. And then here we're just going to play our uh, end bringer school method as we have but only 15 percent elevation and we'll get a nice little eagle uh, on this hole take your time on these adjustments with the end bringer um, sometimes especially with free to play balls in the masters division you're gonna have to pull a lot of rings so take your time uh, make sure you're pulling straight and uh, make sure that you're trying to get as close to that exact number as possible. The beauty of the end bringer's accuracy is you can even hit a great right or a great left sometimes and still um, still get the drop. So that's how I play hole number one. Um, this is the alternative play here with the uh, with the Zerk. Notice we're taking off some of the top spin because we're going to get an additional push from the wind. So we don't we don't need as much top spin. Um, you might be okay with 7.5. Uh, again, this these shots are all just guides. You can tweak them however you want. The big thing here that's different is we're not pushing up all the way to max. So you're going to notice I, I, I adjust just below, just below zero there. We're going to push up 19 yards. And then we're going to go full overpower. So instead of having to, to guess on how much overpower, we're pushing up a little bit less so that we can just use uh, the max overpower on the club. And this one's going to roll out nicely for us. And again, this one would play and bring our school plus 20%. There's a separate video there. Check that one out. Hole number two. Uh, a, a kind of a tricky little par three. We're going to focus on the ball guide here. So at plus 10, we're going to go four backspin and 0.5 right spin. But, but take a look at this ball guide. And you're going to want it just hooking back to the right. About a square and a half left of the hole. We're going to go max plus 20%. Depending on your wind angle here, it's going to be tricky. You might have to zoom in even further um, or try to zoom out uh, with the tree in the way. It, it, it's kind of annoying. Um, I think sometimes they do that on purpose just to mess with us. But And then we're going to add uh, just a little bit, just a little bit of curl here. You can see it just subtly um, hitting that inner wall. 
get this one to roll up off the back of the hill and come right back down for the nice little drop there. Hole number three. I'm going to go back to a luminary. And uh, I know some, some of you all don't want to use luminaries or you don't have a lot of luminaries. Um, you can play this shot with a Zerk. Uh, you're probably going to want to take off some of the top spin because you're going to get a second push from that wind because your wind's going to be 14, 15, 16. Um, so you can, you can take a little bit of top spin off. You cannot push up as many yards. So like I'm pushing up 20 yards here. So if you use a Zerk, you can tweak that as well. So some of these shots, if you don't have luminaries or you don't want to use them because you don't have as many, um, you can try with a Zerk. It's just going to make you have to change and, and add some adjustments because um, if not, you'll you'll either go long or you won't you won't have enough. Um, you'll hit the wrong landing area and potentially go in the water. So I like the luminary on this one. Uh, it gives us a nice safe hit on that rough that rolls us out um, so that we can play with our thorn for uh, the albatross. So depending on your drive distance, you may be at max. Um, you may not quite be at max. The focus really here is on trying to get our ball guideline to be just short and left of the hole. So take your time. Look at this spot. I played this hole probably five times between my three accounts that I was playing in this tournament. And I unfortunately hit a number of great, great shots when I was trying to dial this one in and ended just a little bit right of the hole. So this is definitely a makeable albatross um, if you can try to find that landing area and obviously hit perfect. And, you know, you have to estimate your distance in the club there. So take your time. Um, I'd give you my references there in case you're in a similar spot, but those aren't always perfect. It's just a, a reference to get you started. Unfortunately, a great right here for me that uh, would have had a, a nice chance if I had gotten it uh, to go perfect. Hole number four, probably the hardest hole, uh, in my opinion. Um, one of the top two for sure. And we're not even going to try to go for the eagle on this. Um, I'll tell you what you can do if you're interested in trying to go for the eagle on the second shot. But we're focused on just getting the ball to bounce into the rough and roll out onto that patch. So we're plus eight. You see the spins. Um, you know, this is one where I would absolutely use a luminary because it makes the shot a lot easier. But I try to create an opportunity here for you to, to not so you can save one. Um, but you can use a luminary here. It'll basically leave you with zero overpower to execute this shot because you can start further up. And you can just have the ball rolling into that um, fairway patch with your ball guide and make your adjustment. So if you want to use a luminary, you can. I chose to do the Kingmaker to give you guys a, an easy opportunity here to save a, a, a luminary. So we're going to use the Guardian. Um, with full backspin, and we're just going to dump it on the green and putt for birdie. Like, that's all we're doing here. If you want to try a rough bump with um, either your Grizzly or your B-52, that landing area just to the right and short of the pin is where you're going to want to be, and you're going to want to adjust those spins, um, basically as much left spin as you can, and, and probably a couple of clicks of backspin. It plays plus 5%. Um, but it's, it's just a very difficult shot and there's not a, it's not very consistent. So it's not really worth it. I've ended up short a couple times and had to try to chip in from the bunker. So I recommend just using your guardian, put the backspin on it and take your birdie and move on to the next hole. This hole, I use the Kingslayer. You can play this shot with a Kingmaker. Um, it'll be a slightly different landing area, a little bit further left uh, with not as much backspin, and you can try to replicate a similar ball guide. So you might have to mess with it there. It would be three right spin and probably like 1.6 or so backspin. But if you don't want to use a Kingslayer, you can try it. Um, I like the Kingslayer play here because it gives me the opportunity to, to use that four right spin. You'll notice here we have just a little bit of curl and a teeny bit of underpower. Um, because we do have that fierce tailwind. So um, 
it's a beautiful shot if you can get this one to drop. Um, I've came in left a couple of times, so it's not going to drop every time, but definitely an opportunity here to get a hole in one. Hole number six. This shot, uh, this first shot seems like it could be um, very difficult. I didn't hit the rough at all. Uh, someone asked about that. Um, so this one, I, I never ended up in the rough. I did have a lot of variance in the drive distance, though. So I did have some that were coming in. Uh, it is, is I think my range was like three, 372 all the way up to like 386 on the drive distance, which makes the second shot challenging. So notice that right there, the overpower. Whatever you pull into, that's what you're going to try to replicate here. So I had like a ring and a half, so that's what I tried to put on the shot. And it does look like you're about to hit the rough there, but I didn't. Um, you can you can definitely add more overpower if you're worried about that. This is one of the shorter drives, yeah, 371. So with my shot, I wanted to show this one specifically because I had to push up into overpower to get the ball guideline where I wanted it. If you have a longer drive, you won't have to push up. So you'll see here I push up about a ring to try to get my ball guide just to the hole. Right, So if, if you have a longer drive, you'll just be able to find that spot and then make your adjustment. Now what you'll see me do, and I put this in here in case anyone else finds himself in this spot, whatever you push up into, you just add that at the end. So I'm going to make my adjustment, which I was already at max, and then I'm going to push back up the, the one or a so, little bit more than one ring that I had to push into to find my landing spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to hit perfect. And unfortunately, I don't. And as you watch this one roll, it would have been straight in the center of the cup if I had hit perfect. So hit perfect and get yourself an albatross. Hole number seven, we are going to blast off and try to get as close to the green as possible. So use your, uh, try to mirror this landing spot and Add seven topspin to right spin. The, the key to this one is the curl. If you, if you don't have the right curl, um, you can either end up in a bunker to the left, or you could um, come in with too much curl and actually miss the fairway on your landing area. So watch this. Try to replicate this curl. hit perfect and wa watch how it hits the landing area here though so you're going to tweak right there now if you have more right curl it's going to change that where you're landing so we get a nice roll out here and it's going to leave us with a very simple end bringer shot using our end bringer school method plus 20 percent i do have a second drive um, that's in the actual whole video posted to the site just to show you what you would do if you had a, um, a slightly lower wind. So I think it's like a 14 wind and I execute the same shot and it rolls out nicely. So if you want to see what that looks like, um, either go to the channel and find the, the full video for hole seven or uh, click on the link in the description. You can go right to it. But you're going to drop this end bringer and get yourself a nice eagle. Hole eight, probably the toughest or second toughest hole. This one in hole four. Um, here's my best attempt uh, at trying to to get this drop. There's a lot of risk on this hole. Um, if you underpower it, you can end up in the bunker. So try to find this landing spot with the ball guide curling back towards the cup like that. And then we're mid plus 5%. And then the key here is to, to check on the overpower that I use because if, if you don't get that right, you could come up short and then just trickle into the bunker. You have to kind of bump this one and get a nice little roll out here. This one was the closest I got. I have not dropped this hole yet. Um, I don't anticipate a lot of people getting a hole in one on this hole. So um, 
anything you can do to get close, get your birdie, and move on. Hole number nine, we end this uh, qualifying round with a, a par five with a tricky win. We need to try to get this to roll out into that third section of fairway. So it's really important to try to get the spins right, the landing area, so you can see the ball guide is going to be trickling into the rough. And then we will uh, go ahead and make our adjustment. And it's important to see, did I pull into overpower? If I did, I'm going to use the amount that I pulled into. So you can see here, I'm going to, you can get the curl check there, and I'm going to pull just a touch into overpower because that's how much I pulled into during my adjustment. You're going to bounce twice and then roll out a lot of times you can end up in the rough if you too too much overpower in that case you're still safe you have an easy rough shot to the green so there's not a lot of risk with that drive because you'll still be able to get the eagle pretty easily here we have to estimate our distance um, which can get tricky and we want to make sure that we try to mirror this ball guideline as best we can um, we're gonna line up right of the hole because we have that secondary wind that's going to push it to the right and then we're going to add 20 percent elevation and then the key to this one because it's going to be landing on a downhill we're going to underpower it slightly if you were to add full power to this you're probably going to miss that rough and fly over the green so hopefully you get a, a nice roll out here and get this albatross to end your round now you may have seen these notes at the top of the videos about interest in joining a free-to-play Masters Tournament clan. I've opened a new clan, and if you're interested in joining, you can scan that QR code or you can click on this description that's in the video. This will be a clan that's dedicated to Masters Tournament players who are focused on using free-to-play shots whenever possible. So if you're interested, click on that link, scan the QR code. Good luck, everybody.